and welcome to Culture Shock. I'm Alex, and I'm talking with Mr. Sam Grezes. He's a writer, actor, blogger, and live streamer based in Chicago, and he's published with the likes of Ion Magazine, Thrillist, and Up Rocks. If you're a fan of My Brother, My Brother, and Me, he's the guy who he laid downhill in an auditorium during a live show. He also has a podcast called State Your Case, where he streamlines America. So, how you doing, Sam? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. So, can you tell us a bit about State Your Case? Yeah. So, uh, so the five second version is State Your Case is a podcast where we go through state by state all of the states in the United States of America and pretty much see whether or not they are fit to be included in America 2.0, a sleeker, more aerodynamic, sexy, and wonderful version of the United States of America. That's like the, you know, what I put in the podcast description, the real kind of purpose of the show is to talk to people from, you know, every state in the country and figure out like what makes those states special, what's so what's so cool about them. And then the fun part is at the end based on how generous or not I am feeling, I get to break their hearts by, you know, kicking their state out of this arbitrary thing I'm creating. So, you know, that's fun. It's a bit of a power trip. Oh, definitely. And actually, we'll get we'll dive back in your podcast in just, in just a second. I actually wanted to talk about the Heelys real quick. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Everyone wants to talk about the Heelys. So how are they? They're so they're great. They are great. I, I will say I haven't been able to wear them in a very long time. Yeah. Probably since I want to say like December. Uh, the mm-hmm. live show was in was the Chicago show in uh, November, like November 11th or something. Um, yeah. and I live in Chicago, so it is mm-hmm. snowing all the time. It is icy all the time. There is snow on the streets all the time, uh, and in the sidewalks. So I haven't really, I'm out of practice. Let's put it that way. It's a lot of fun and I've gotten like decent at it, but I am yeah. very, very out of practice, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Well, and I imagine like wearing shoes with wheels is probably not a good choice when there's ice. Everywhere. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. also, <laughs> I, what I what I will say, what I will say is that the nice thing about Heelys, at least now, is that mm-hmm. you can like pop the wheels out and uh, and like put like a normal sole in the shoe, so you don't really? just have to like you don't have to commit to being a cool Heely boy all the time if you're if you're wearing them. You can just kind of like you have to carry around like a weird hook tool to do it, but uh <laughs> you can like you can like take them out and pop in normal shoe bottom yeah. things. I mean at least that's better than carrying the burden of like, well I'm the, I guess I'm the guy with Heelys today. At yeah, least, yeah. at least you can hide it. Yes, you can you can hide it and you cannot fall all over the place when it is bad outside. Yeah, and then so how much pressure did you feel when you were asked to Healy downhill in an auditorium in front of like a crowded auditorium with Mabimbam like staring you down? Uh, here's here's the thing, uh, the the things that I remember about that moment, right? Yeah. Um, are freaking out when they were when they were reading my question. Yeah. And when Justin, if you haven't, uh, if you don't listen to Mabimbam, if you haven't listened to the episode, uh, one of the hosts, Justin McElroy, uh, says nothing, said something to the effect of nothing would give me more pleasure than watching a grown man Healy for the first time or something <laughs> like that. And then I screamed out, I'm actually wearing them once, once. Yeah. And then the entire like section near me, like stood up, turned around, looked at me and they all started yelling. He's wearing them. That's when my mind <laughs> went blank. That is about imagine. when my mind went blank. I, I, The next thing I remember is getting back to my seat and like people applauding and looking at me like I I was some sort of crazy person. Uh, There were – this is why I really wanted like videos of the moment because I don't remember. I was like in a third person (laughs) like state of flow healing badly down the aisle of the Chicago theater while dabbing. I, I mean, don't. that's about as poetic as you can get to be. Yeah, honest. really, really. I I have peaked already, and it's kind of sad, but I, I somehow always knew it would be this way, I think. Well, and imagine it's kind of bittersweet to feel like, well, to have the thought of, is this the most applause I'm ever going to get? Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it's kind of, uh, yeah, right. It's kind of um, uh, sad, especially as someone who used to be a, 
a theater kid and still acts on yeah. occasion. That is that is the most applause I have ever gotten in my life. <laughs> well, with the possible exception, I did I did visit Canada once, and I was in this super 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 packed uh, yeah. karaoke bar, and I did Ooh. Cowboy by Kid Rock. Uh, this was like four years ago, mm. and um, and everyone went crazy because I was uh, I was you know from the USA just doing this stupid freaking Kid song. Rock song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're like, "Oh, friggin' Yankee over here." That and asshole. They, they went crazy. <laughs> yeah, that asshole. I was. I am very much. If you know me in real life, you know that I am reluctantly that guy in a lot of situations. So you know, yeah. as someone who is also that guy, I feel your pain. So, yeah. Going back to your podcast, finally. So, mm -hmm. what do you? So, I guess to kind of peek, to kind of part the curtain for other states yes. that are looking to be a part of your new union. What are some things that you look for? So we, it's it's funny. So the we we had some technical difficulties with the last episode. Uh, yeah, so we're yeah that that sucks. We're gonna have to like re-record the whole darn thing. But one of the uh, one of the things that the guest asked me was that like what do you look for in a state and this is when i i told him what i kind of like to say on the podcast which is the mm -hmm. podcast yes ostensibly is about creating america 2.0 based on my stupid whims right yeah. <laughs> but but at the end of the day that's not why people listen to the podcast right mm -hmm. people listen to the podcast to learn interesting unique and special facts about States that they have not never been to, never really thought about, um, and really never, never really registered on their radar. Like, you know, yeah. states like Utah, states like I don't know, like the the one we did, um, uh, we recorded, but we'll have to re-record was Arkansas, and it was like yeah. you, you never think about Arkansas. States like Iowa, Nebraska, flyover Tennessee. states. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, ten Tennessee, you don't think of Tennessee, but you kind of think of Nashville, right? A little so bit, yeah. There's, there's what I kind of look for in states, and this is, this is what I kind of try to draw out of the guests that I get, mm -hmm. are the unique things that you can find in that state and nowhere else, or the unique things that that state has given us. Uh, yeah. There was one uh, in the Oklahoma episode, we, mm -hmm. were, we talked about this, oh God, I can't remember the, uh, the name of the store, but there is this shop along route 66 mm -hmm. that is very like it's not remote but it is kind of like there's nothing next to it and it's just yeah. all of these different uh gourmet sodas hmm. and that's all they do it, the, just the walls are full of shelves of gourmet sodas that have been arranged by color and by flavor and and by like variety and it's like it, it, it's it's stuff like that. It's the small weird things. Like um, I love talking about the the weird cryptids that are uh, uh, native to each yes. state. Right, the the weird ghost stories, the 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 fact that like oh, there's a Kool Aid museum here right there's uh yeah. there all of these weird things that you wouldn't necessarily think about um and and my the big thing for me and probably the biggest thing if you're like i want to be on the podcast i'm from one of the dakotas i know he doesn't know anyone from one, from one of the dakotas <laughs> um think about state foods uh yeah. foods that have um been introduced to the uh, food canon of the United States through a specific mm -hmm. state. Because that, um, to me at least, uh, for a country like the United States, it's very um, easy, I think, to understand history through food since we are a country of immigrants, right? Like, yeah. we we all came here well, we didn't all come here from from somewhere else. We, you know, we we will. So there, there, there. But but the vast majority of us did, uh, yeah. and and it is kind of a a melting pot, and that's where our culinary chops kind of come from, right? That's where mm -hmm. we get chili. That's where we get gumbo. That's where we get uh, all of these amazing, like, like that's where we get the Philly cheesesteak. That's where we get the lobster roll. These are all uh, dishes that have come from 
peop like from people translating the cuisine of other cultures after they have gotten off the plane or boat or however yeah. they got to this new country. And you can dig in deeper through that uh, and kind of track the history of the population of a state kind of through the, the types of food that mm -hmm. they produce and that they, and the types of food they introduce to the rest of the country. So that's, that's a big one is state foods because definitely and actually, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say, I think, I think it is one of the best ways and one of the easiest ways to understand not just the history of the United States, but history in general, you can tell a lot about culture by food. Oh, of course. And I think, um, you could also take like see, like not only tracking how like a particular food item is like changed over the course of a culture, mm -hmm. but then maybe if if you were to compare like okay, so this is where it's at today, and this is where it started. Like right. maybe see okay, so then why? What are some reasons why it would have changed? So I remember I think it, so it was the episode with Colin, so the Louisiana episode. Yes, so yes. The, so it was. So the discussion about gumbo, like, okay, so it's this one item coming from all these different cultures, and uh, this is what we have, but this is everything that it came from. So then comparing, okay, so this is where it started, this is where we end up. So, And Louisiana is probably the, the quintessential case for this, right? Yeah. Because it, as a Gulf state, it was and still is such a kind of thriving area because you have so many people from so many different places mm -hmm. living there and thriving there and it's yeah. it's it's kind of it is very interesting to be able to track specifically you can go like from the food and see like where this food came from like literally gumbo you know you have you have yeah. france you have african american uh cultures or uh, you have african cultures in there you have uh haitian cultures in there uh a bit of um a bit of Caribbean nation uh, in there. You have s so many different influences from so many different places. And mm -hmm. that exists more or less, I think, in most every dish that we would consider American. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think Louisiana is probably the most clear case of it just because – it is known, and New Orleans specifically is known to to be and have been this kind of port, this kind of melting pot where where people kind of landed. But uh, but yeah, no, I, I I completely agree with that. You can kind of dig, like drill down in that way. Yeah. Now, so going, so touching on the idea of like a melting pot. So mm -hmm. I I for, so I forget where I read this. So maybe I shouldn't be referencing this. But there was an article I read that kind of just that kind of broke down the differences between the idea of a melting pot versus a tossed salad. Oh, sure. So do you see, do you, do you like see the terms to be as interchangeable or do you think, do you think it's like literally more of like these cultures are melting together versus like just elements of these cultures are coming off and then creating I, this new thing? I think it's, I think that the ideal for, uh, for what, you know, America 2.0 should be yeah. is some, is somewhere in between, between right maybe like a, a chopped salad with like some vinaigrette on top that kind of yeah. melds the flavors together just a little bit right just because because i think that i think that there's there is a a some truth to the matter of like you know if everything melts together you nothing is distinct right yeah. and and it's you get brown right mm -hmm. you when you when you mix, like when you make that thing at the soda machine, where you go down the line and do 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 the we'll suicide of like Coke, <laughs> orange soda, Dr Pepper, Diet Coke, yeah. Mister Pib, right? It's just brown and not great. You know, yeah. it's not something that you necessarily want to do. Whereas the maybe the like better way to do that would be to put everything in a Slurpee. So you, yeah. you kind of have like – you have distinct layers and you can see where everything's from. But you still kind of have that that like that cultural exchange, right? Course, so, yeah. so yeah, I think, I think melting pot – I never really thought about that. But melting pot is a misnomer. Um, I, I think that – I think that it's I, – I, I don't want America 2.0 to be bland in that way. So it's, it's good yeah. that you brought that up. 
I appreciate that. So I so touching on a few things that you like to focus on with your state breakdowns, yes. one thing you had yes. mentioned was cryptozoology and also one thing that I've noticed is spooky shit. So yeah. Yep. Uh, so besides state food, so what's made you interested in uh, the cryptozoology and spooky shit and what have stu- what has stood out the most across the states that you've researched? So in terms of cryptozoology and spooky shit, I feel mm-hmm. like it, it's kind of my same argument with food. Yeah. You get a lot of states that kind of you you can kind of tell what what a state is about by the kind of stories they tell and this is mm-hmm. this is kind of a, a good entryway into it. I remember specifically I was doing the Iowa episode and there were there was a story of a haunted like God, it was like a haunted room at a college, I think. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if it was the University of Iowa or if it was Iowa State or a smaller college there. Yeah. But uh, there was like a haunted grandfather clock and the the way that the haunting worked is it would like the, the ghost there who lived in the grandfather clock would like go down and like play the piano in the common space or like pull someone's covers off of them while they're sleeping. And I'm like, that's just that's just things that happen normally. Yeah. People just yeah. go downstairs and play the piano, and then you're like, and it's like, oh, it must have been a ghost. Oh, who plays pianos other than dead people? Yeah, really, because who who else knows how to play piano? Everyone stopped <laughs> taking lessons when they were nine. Yeah, uh, and then there and then there were there are other ghosts that are just like a helpful ghosts. There yeah. there are certain states, a lot of midwestern states kind of run the gamut right they're the they're the ghosts that will like fuck you up they will like they will get you you go into the ghost cave you do not come out and then there's there there are ghosts that like haunt hotels that are like helpful and they're like if if you know if you can't reach the fan the ghost will pull it for you or or they'll set the thermostat just right or if you leave your door unlocked They'll well, lock it work. for you or something. <laughs> yeah, like the the friend the friendly ghosts. That's cute. Yeah, it's 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 super it's super cute. Uh, so and I always like a, go okay. ahead. I'm sorry. Well, so it's kind of like your distinction between the monsters at the Amnesty Lodge versus your monsters just coming out of the portal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit, although. A little bit. I, I mean the 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 difference there is that when you get to. When you get to the really scary ghost stories, right, the mm-hmm. ones that have some basis in fact, because there there are, you know, there are nuggets of, like, things. They're all from, like, unexplained murders or whatever. Yeah. Um, so there, there, there's always, like, a little nugget of truth to be found. Uh, the, the reason that, the, that these urban legends uh, from state to state kind of persist is – that unlike unlike you know well ghost stories are different from cryptids right so cryptids yeah. are more animalistic right they they mm-hmm. have their own urges and desires i mean like the chupacabra eats your goats there's there's a version of the chupacabra i can't remember what state it was in but it just like eats a bunch of hogs there's a bear that ate, eats a bunch of hogs, and that was just mm. all it does. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's like it, there's kind of an animalistic uh, protect my domain, eat my food. You are – maybe you're not threatening me, but I am this ferocious beast yeah. that that cannot – that doesn't have like higher uh, – higher functions right it it it, yeah. it might it is not aware in the way that say you know we are aware that yeah. that's what that's what like scary stories about cryptids are and that's why they're so scary when you tell them around the campfire at night the yeah. the difference between those and state ghost stories is so like i love that we have both of these kind of cultural things uh parallel to each other because the scary thing about ghost stories is that like you'll do something wrong and a smart ghost will fuck you up for it right yeah you you like you like follow the tracks and like you see a lantern there and it's a like it's it's a headless rail worker and like and he beckons you to follow the lantern and then no one sees you again 
Yeah. Like you get tricked by a ghost or you get like, it's not, it's, it's very rarely a ghost like comes out, screams at you and kills you just because that's what it is. Right. The, I mean, yeah. the most famous one, like you say, Bloody Mary three times into the mirror and Bloody Mary comes out and kills you. Bloody Mary ain't yeah. going to do anything if you don't say those words. It's like, yeah. I, I, I think it's very, it's very interesting to, to put those stories, those like scary stories, like side by side and be like, okay, so like, this is the, the more animal one. This is the one that's focused on power. Right. And yeah. how, no matter what you do, like you come up against one of these monsters. I mean, what you do is run as fast as you can. And yeah. this other thing where it's like, I mean, you can't overpower a ghost cause they are a ghost. Right. Yeah, they, they obviously. will. <laughs> right. So I don't know. I, I, that's, that's kind of my, my, my take on it. And that's why I kind of try to, to go into both. Yeah. Well, and to a certain extent, maybe that, so I, I'm very good at, at feeling like I, an observation I made is really intelligent, but then it just really falls short and it's just like, yeah, hey, that's just really obvious. Um, so it's, like well, just, I was, I was going to say, welcome, welcome to, you know, being a podcast host, right? That yeah, is true. <laughs> I think, I think that is every single person who hosts a podcast has a problem with that, myself included. So, so going back to a uh, streamlining America. So, uh -huh. um, so how many states have made the cut? How many haven't? And what are still undecided? How many states so far? Uh, I'm going to need to... I have a handy-dandy notebook for Ooh. for that. Uh, let me pull it right up. Okay. So I think so far the, the rate of success has been around uh, uh, three out of four. Um, That's not bad. So we, we are, we are well more than halfway through, uh, yeah. creating America 2.0, um, 30, 31, 32 States overall. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And of those, uh, two States have seceded to form their own mega state, which was one of my favorite episodes to, yeah. to be <laughs> fair. I love that episode very much. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight states that have been cut so far. So eight out of 30. Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit over uh, one in four states um, are being cut. So I, I, I feel like I, I'm a big softy about these kinds of things. So when I finish all 50, I'm thinking of putting them in like a battle royale, like round robin tournament where yeah. there can be only one. So uh, what I'm actually really excited to do after I finish all 50, my, my yeah. first priority at that point is I really want to be able to talk to people from Guam and American Samoa and the yeah. American Virgin islands. And I, you know, I'd love to get people from like some Canadian provinces in Mexico as well and yeah. kind of see if we can get them possibly in and yeah. i think that would be more me making the case to a lot of them to be like hey hey puerto rico we know like we know we we've, we've, we've done some bad stuff um a lot of bad Ugh. yeah can you want do, do you want in for real or so I, I, that that's yeah. something that i'm that <laughs> i'm i'm really excited to to kind of put my sights on after uh after we've done all 50 because there's it's it, this podcast is interesting right because yeah. this one specifically has like a hard end right like at mm -hmm. the 50 states right there is yeah. a there it is like a project that has a beginning and end um mm -hmm. so i'm i'm kind of excited for what happens when that end happens and and thinking about like what i do what I do after, because I would love to, I would love to talk about the American territories. I would love to talk about some Central American or, or Canadian um, yeah. countries as well. Um, but it, it, at some point, uh, I I need to kind of prepare myself for the fact that like I will have made something with this podcast, and it will be complete in a way that a lot of podcasts aren't. You know what I mean? 
Correct. And that yeah. and that's something that I think it, like it 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 will be it'll be a little bit bittersweet because on one hand it'll like I'll be able to look at this thing and be like I mean I made that with a lot of help yeah. but like I made this complete thing I went through and I like talked to someone from all 50 states and I I did this thing but uh but at the same time it'll be like okay so so what do I do now do I just start another podcast I don't know Yeah start another podcast <laughs> Yeah fair fair well, so actually, so Colin and I have been running into something similar. So, uh, so I, I, well, now I'm, I'm turning the promotion around. So yeah. um, me and another member of the Scavengers Network kept a podcast called Journey Under 30. Where we I, I thought you were going to go here with this because I was like, that's, it's a kind of similar deal. Yeah. So the, the idea is like we, we discussed people who are on the Forbes 30 under 30 list and how they got there and applying it to ourselves. And this has only been going on for so long. So, a certain, so like Colin and I have been trying to figure out, okay, so how can we kind of stretch this out? Because at some point, we're either going to run out of people or run out of people we want to talk about. So mm-hmm. it's always interesting to figure out, okay, so once I get to the end, am I just going to stop it or kind of find a way to kind of keep it going, even though it's just kind of like the, it's jumped the shark and I'm just kind of keeping it on life support? Or is it just going to see where it go, see where it I goes? Th- I think that this is a, a problem that a lot of content creators and especially YouTubers have. Yeah. More, more so, maybe more so than podcasters even. Um, but I think that I think that there is a, and not to say like stop doing what you're doing, but there's a there is a skill in knowing when what you have done is complete, right? Yeah. And and knowing that that like. There maybe maybe there's still new ground to cover, but there is not enough new ground to cover to like to justify keeping doing it, right? Like yeah. and justify like putting excess onto because because then what happens is like when you've made your podcast, people will be like, okay, so you know when you when you get to the end, like stop listening at episode like sixty five. Because then they yeah. then then you know it's it's whatever just just find something else and you know you don't want you don't want people to be doing that you don't want people to be talking about something you made that way especially yeah, since like you know once you make art it's not really yours anymore and you know yeah so going back to the work side of things so mm-hmm. your bio states that in order to unlock you we need to beat the game on very hard without losing a life mm-hmm. then we need to beat you in battle so do you have any yeah. tips on how to win the fight? Oh sure. Uh, just remember your remember your inputs, right? You mm-hmm. there. You can like go to Game Facts and have the and have your command list set up. What I will say is, you yeah. are pro- if you're having trouble, you're not blocking enough. You're not okay. blocking enough. And I know I know it's like fun to go all aggro and and try and, but listen, it's just not going to work nine times out of ten. You you'll get too frustrated. Just sit back. It gets a whole lot easier if you play the game at your own pace and just go slow. And then you look for an opening and it's it's a lot, a lot easier than you think it is. Sounds good. So if people want to find more out, find – if I want to learn how to speak, if people want to find out more about you, where can they go? Oh, yeah, sure. So you can find me at Sam Grzezes on Twitter. It's a very bad Twitter handle I know. S A M. G R E S Z E S E S E S. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitch and on Instagram. I am Robots Fighting Dinosaurs on both. Uh, if you want to keep up with my writing, uh, you can follow me at samgrezes.com or robotsfightingdinosaurs.com. I snagged both of those URLs. Nice. Get at me. Uh, and uh, and yeah, obviously you can check out State Your Case wherever fine podcasts are sold. Uh, I'm, I also guest on another podcast uh, that is called Intentional Sounding for all of you sports fans out there. It's uh, nice. it's kind of a very irreverent football adjacent podcast. Yeah, uh, yeah. So so it's it's. Don't worry if you don't like sports. Give it a try. We have an episode where we make an anime called anime Santa. And that's pretty much all we talk about. And that was during the football season. So <laughs> it's the off season now. Off Imagine season. what we're going to get up to. Yeah. Yeah. It's we're in the off season now. So we're just going to be fucking buck wild. Sweet. And actually, so I, I checked out your Twitch and I saw you had like the e, an ESPN logo for your offline banner. Uh-huh. Like, is, do you have like any association with them or is it just like, I like ESPN? No, no. It was just like, it was just, <laughs> it's, it's a holdover from, uh, from a series I did where I, 
played Madden a lot and I was very bad at Madden oh. and that was the joke. But but I just kept oh, okay. it because it's just like the ESPN, we're in a commercial now. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I thought it was funny. Anyway, I stream oh, yeah, every I stream every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern for about an hour and a half ish give or take uh so so catch catch me there we're doing a thing called steam roulette now where like i'm picking these random weird games off of steam and uh and just kind of playing them and seeing what they're all about and laughing at them very hard i'm playing literally so like at the time we're recording i'm gonna stop recording and then start streaming and the game i'm streaming today is called genital jousting and you play as a a, a little peebus and uh and i saw you, that yeah. yep it's uh <laughs> it's it's a very it's a very fun game and i i highly recommend watching videos of it to see if it's your kind of thing <laughs> i guess specifically watching sam <laughs> yeah and and specifically <laughs> yeah specifically watch me play it tonight uh if you have a time machine Mr. Sam Grezes, Grezes, yes. this, this, this. thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about all the cool stuff you do. My um, pleasure. And Thanks for having me. Of course. And we actually went over all this, all the places where people can find you. So that's my outro. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs>